I don't know. You know, it sounds like they probably just need you to power through some things. That's how businesses work. There's no free lunch in this world, and I've been telling you that since you were six. I hope you're well and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a series of quick role plays to show what being invalidated looks like within the toxic family system. And you might identify with some of these or you might identify with a lot of them. Whatever comes up, comes up. In our present lives, we can get extremely triggered around validation, both in receiving validation as well as giving it. And I think giving it is especially hard if you grew up in a shame-based system like mine. As my mentor Amanda Curtin likes to say that she often says that in abusive families, feedback gets wrecked. Just a very simple and to the point expression and feedback about giving it and receiving it. In this video, we'll focus on the receiving end of validation and what comes up and the triggers that come up with it. If we take a closer look at what validation is, I think it's simply asking for help at the heart of it. Seeking validation is such a basic human thing that when a person needs it, I think they need help via connection. And trauma is all about disconnection and being disconnected from others, being disconnected from uh, for our attachment figures, as well as being later in life, being dis disconnected with ourselves. In our adult lives as childhood trauma survivors, I think we either don't seek out validation for fear of criticism or shame, like how we maybe run from things like compliments and we can't take them in, I see those as similar. And the inner child is usually freaked out by that connection from others because it got wrecked growing up. Or our inner child can be seeking validation too much from others, like looking at our partner as a parent figure and, and going to them with a certain kind of energy, seeking a certain kind of validation that becomes dysfunctional. And we might be doing that because our inner adult isn't in place to do some self-validation, coming back to that concept of being connected to self. We are still seeking an internal, external parent from others, and in that case, instead of learning how to be that person for ourselves, hopefully that makes sense. This video might help you see or figure out why we have these triggers around validation by either running from it or chasing it or a combination of both depending on the situation for the person. If you're new to me, welcome. I'm Patrick Tian, a therapist and life coach who specializes in the inner child recovery with the focus on the toxic family system. I'm also a childhood trauma survivor. Um, and if you find this video helpful to you, you can hit some buttons on the screen. You can't miss with any of the buttons. If you find that these videos are helpful to you and to your recovery, you can consider supporting the work that goes into the channel over at my Patreon. You can also check out some childhood trauma um, therapy coursework on my website. It's also a good place to get in touch with me. And you guys can also find me on Instagram and on TikTok. And I'll have all the links and all that mumbo jumbo in the description to the video below. So if we go to our partner or someone close to us for help and support, or even like a coworker, their reaction to us or our problem we are facing can really take us back to our family system. Like if the person we're seeking help or connection from does stuff like criticizes or plays devil's advocate, which is a personal pet peeve of mine if someone does that up front, or it's half available to you, like they're on their phone while talking to you, or they talk about themselves or they take it over, or they minimize your problem or minimize your feelings, or even worse, they just stare blankly at you for not knowing what to say or what to do or because they're shut down and trigger themselves. Those examples might sound like something from your family system. As a result of that feedback, and what I mean there, is our trigger reactions can look like what we might feel on, that, on the receiving end of that is intense anger or feeling criticized or the being triggered to the person being so insensitive to us. We can also be hyper-focused on one thing the person said, like a reaction to their criticism or, or even hearing them wrong because it's so triggering for us. Like you might become obsessed with parts of things that they said, like, you know, it's what I'm paid for, really? Like that's what you would focus on when I go to this problem? And, you know, they you might mistake them when the person was trying to mention something like, you know, thank God you're getting compensated in some way for all this bull. 
that you have to go through. And we might take it wrong. It's another example of being triggered. This stuff is kind of complicated. You might also have a shame reaction becoming overwhelmed um, what the, with what the person now might think about you. Like you might get a shame attack afterward for seeking that validation or bothering them. Um, another way the shame could work is that now you may, they may shame you and you may now have the total opposite take on the situation because the person changed your mind or changed your feelings about it. So this kind of flip-flopping that might happen. Or even um, a reaction to the triggering might be you might feel an icky, in like an ickiness to the intimacy of that because you shared yourself and you shared um, a problem with someone. That may be a trigger back to your family system. And in my case, in all of my all my work environments before and while I was working on my childhood trauma, I was pretty needy with my coworkers around validation. Like so, the pattern for me was that I get like ticked off about something at work or someone or something. And I'm a pretty and terrible employee, by the way, like I'm much better working on my own for these reasons. So, um, you know, I would really work myself up and get really upset. And then I would seek validation and connection from a coworker because it's like my inner child needed them to have the same attitude and needed them to have the same problem. And I did this a lot. So, you know, my coworkers would gradually get annoyed with me um, because I was probably like that daily. I would get very triggered in environments because I, I honestly think that when you walk into work, when it's not a pandemic, when you walk into that building, just that building alone can represent um, your family in, in many ways in your subconscious or to the inner child. So it's what I mean by that. So when I would go to like these coworkers, gradually they'd be like, you know, I don't know, dude, I just like punch the clock and just try to get through my day as a way to shoot me down because I was a bit extra. I was a bit too much in that seeking validation. And I was dysfunctional ab about seeking that validation because in my family, the way my family would bond was we would bond through negativity and complaining. So that's the way that I was seeking connection in the ways that I sort of knew how. And many of you guys might relate to that as well. Like relating to things in a gossipy way or like a really kind of really caustic kind of way. Um, and looking back now, like that connection seeking wasn't productive and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't helpful. So I, when I was seeking that kind of connection with my coworkers, they were just trying to get through their day and I was sort of barking up the wrong tree for that kind of connection. And me even seeking that connection wasn't good. Um, this was very triggering to me because my family could also shame me for being upset as well. So it's kind of a mess. So why do we get so triggered around seeking validation? Well, the best way is to show you guys, and I'm gonna do a series of types of invalidating parents in one scenario with an adult child who is having a problem and needs help and needs that connection. Um, these are not the only types of invalidating parents, but they're just a collection of stuff that I see in my practice, even from my own family system. That's where these characters come from. And um, this time, guys, I'm not gonna assign gender to this, either to the parent or to the child, because often we might get too caught up in, I get a lot of comments or requests, can you do uh, a mother, daughter, or mom's narcissistic and the daughter struggling with this, very specific things. And sometimes we'll get too caught up in that. We, we might miss the, the actual parenting piece and while we're looking at the gender too much. So as you're watching this, you can just try to imply or superimpose your situation with the parent and the child. So here you go, yo. The scenario in this video is um, an adult child, say like mid to late 20s, is one month into a new job and that they were very hopeful about and all of a sudden it becomes a nightmare job and they're calling their parent to connect about it to get some help about it to seek some validation. So here goes, I'm gonna be role playing a bunch of different types of invalidating parents in a row. And at the end, I'll do what it would look like if the parent was healthy. That'll be the last role play. And again, think about if, if the child who is an adult in this scenario, think about is if they are having appropriate feelings about that job and keep in mind how you might feel with the toxic parent's reaction to the child seeking help, which is really what validation is, I think. So here goes and try to keep these things in mind. Hey, do you have a few minutes? Yeah, well, I just don't know what to do. Like the job I took is so overwhelming and 
It's not what they told me it would be at all when I started. Last week they abruptly laid off my teen partner who was training me and then they had a meeting with me and telling me I was going to take over all of their projects and that was just my third week there. I have no idea where all their files are or their contacts and I was already working like 50 hours to learn their system and, um, and to learn the clients and this week I just worked over 70 hours and I'm salary. That's nearly double my hours. And I know this is a lot, but like, I haven't been sleeping at all and I'm getting up at 6.30 and I don't get out of there till nine sometimes and I can't sleep. And if I ask questions, my supervisor just rolls their eyes at me like I'm bothering them. And they said yesterday in my interview that they thought I was a go-getter and that I would do whatever it takes. That never came up in the interview. And I just asked HR about my insurance plan because I need to set up my primary care appointment for that thing. And they casually told me that insurance doesn't kick in for another two months when it was in writing on my offer letter that it was supposed to start this week. Like after the 30 days. I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm exhausted and I needed this job to be better than I, than I thought it was. I have no idea what to do. I don't know. You know, it sounds like they probably just need you to power through some things. That's how businesses work. There's no free lunch in this world, and I've been telling you that since you were six. You know, and what's so wrong with needing employees to rally once in a while? That's not too much to ask. I know, I'm sorry, but maybe there are bigger things going on in the background that they just need to do. It's not always about what employees need. You know, look, if I were you, I would just power through it, you know? It probably won't last forever and you don't get everything you want in life. I've been trying to get you to think like that, but you always think you deserve more from the world I'm when sorry. you don't. Like, I'm just grateful I have a job, you know? Not everybody does. Well, if you think that's bad, they just changed the record system at the hospital. And now I have to log in every time and I can't find anything. I can't find stats, I can't find doctor's orders, and it's a nightmare. This one's telling me it's not a big deal. That one's telling me they hate the system too. Why couldn't they have just left it alone? I've been working on that system since I started 15 years ago. And now I can't get through a shift without having to tell my boss how much I hate it and why it doesn't work. Do you know that they had the nerve to tell me that if I don't learn the system, they might have to take disciplinary action against me? I'm union, I said. I will go straight to the top with this. That's not the way to treat me, and I'm not the only one struggling with this thing. Maybe you could ask to be trained again. I'm not doing that. That, that first training took a whole afternoon. It took, it, no, I'm not doing that again. I don't see why, why can't they make the two systems talk to each other? The old system and the new system. Oh, have you talked with your brother? Well, you wouldn't believe what's going on with his work. They gave him all this responsibility by having him train two new people. And they didn't even ask him if he would do it. They told him. He has to make sure that they understand what he does and they're asking him constant questions and he's just trying to get through his day. One of them even followed him as he was on his way to lunch. Like read the room, you know? I keep telling him it's not forever, but I think he should say something, don't you? But I didn't call about, like maybe they should compensate him or something like that for all that, you know? People don't get what it's like for him to just get through his day, but he's got such a good way about him, and I can see why they asked him to train, because he's probably the only one who's competent around there. And? You didn't even ask me about what I'm going through with work. I got my own problems going on, and I don't even know what you want me to say. Like, do you think I have the bandwidth to help you when it's not that bad, actually? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, like... And talk about what? I can't possibly see what I can do for you when I have nothing left for myself. You're not calling me to see what I need. I get no help from anyone. It's the story of my life. And you of all people should know that. Oh, really? But what are you going to do? You need that health insurance. You just started and you probably don't even have the time to look elsewhere for a new job. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't work. Look, don't say anything now because you'll get ridden up or something for insubordination probably. You don't want that right now because 
you know, you'll need to use them as a reference at some point. I wouldn't even have the time to look for another job. Not that, not that one would just appear right in front of you like you need right now. And I hope you don't get sick because really paying out of pocket for insurance right now is in, it's, you probably don't even qualify for Cobra because you left the other job. I thought about that. Even if you did, that's like half your month's salary probably. And if you say or do anything, then they'll badmouth you. And you'll never get a reference from them and you might not work for months. You should be extra careful around this because you're probably trapped. Oh, you know, it's just like that movie that you, what you just said, you know, oh, it's, it's going to kill me now. Which movie was it? I can't help me think about what it was. Who was the woman, the country singer with all the blonde hair and she's so pretty. She's got an amusement park now. Dolly Parton? Yes, that's it. Oh, you would love this movie I'm thinking of. It's, you have to see it. It's older. And I know that you might not like it since, you know, you don't really appreciate that kind of comedy, but, um, but we love this movie growing up. And oh, it was an important movie about men and women in the workplace. And it was so funny with the boss and he's in his underwear and oh my God, you die. The co-star. Oh, who, who, who was the co-star? She was, she was a brunette. Not the one doing the yogurt commercials, although she looks amazing right now, but Jane Fonda, that's who she is. But, but the other one is, well, the movie, it was The Times. And you know, if you grew up then and you would, you would appreciate it. Why are we talking about, like, I haven't seen this movie. Well, if you'd let me finish, you'd see the point that I, the, Lily Tomlin, that's who it is. Oh my God, I loved her. That's the third one. And you know, you'd have to see this movie. and. You totally get what I'm saying. Oh, hey, you know, that sounds really hard, but I'm in the middle of trying to talk with somebody right now, trying to get through something with somebody, and I'm sure we can connect about it later, maybe. You're okay though, right? I guess. Well, good, good. And if it's not major, and if you don't mind, I'm shoring up a situation here, and then It'll tie me up until next week, but maybe you could, maybe could you call me back and I'll make a note that you want to have this conversation and I can catch up with you then. Okay, good, okay. good, okay. Whoa, that sounds like such an ordeal. I'm so sorry that they've done such a 180 on you like that. You must be exhausted. I am, yeah, I'll bet. I've been there and no, uh, you just feel like you're crazy because probably I wonder if the other people at work are so used to it by now or, or even shut down that, and you're new, so I wonder if it's not safe to really bounce things off your other coworkers because you don't know who you can trust. Yeah, like I can't bring anything up and it, it's just so off. Well, it's so not healthy or normal. And you know, it sounds like one of those nightmare jobs that people talk about and having, and then once they're out of it, they swear they'll never do something like that again. And that's kind of what it was like for me and you know, do you need any help maybe coming up with a plan? I can't even think really through that. I'm distressed and, you know, I totally get the stress of it all, but I, I worry that that might keep you in it a little bit longer than you need to be. And, you know, they're not doing right by you. So I maybe if maybe you could dial it back and take your time on the work and to reserve some energy to take care of yourself and maybe think about getting out of there if that's what you think you might need, you know? What I'm saying is maybe just give them 80% right now instead of 1,000% and really try to take care of yourself. Yeah, that's, I needed to hear that. Sure, you're so welcome, hang in there. So which one of these dysfunctional parents did you most resonate with? Each one of them has their own way of cutting off connection. And think about how each of those parents view their child. This might be the most important part of the video is a little bit about thinking about how you're seen and how they view you. One of the parents seems to see their child as competition. One of them seems to view them like they're the audience, like with that nine to five one. One reserves, um, one reverses the roles and makes it all about them and as if the child was like a fellow griper or fellow complainer, like they would do that with a friend, but they do that with their child and totally take the thing over. Um, one of them sees their child as like an entitled loser. And then to think about if, if that's how they see us 
and if they raised us, that's how your inner child will feel about themselves when seeking or getting validation that is triggering. So that might be the most important takeaway is how somebody likes this sees us, you know, like that stuff about it becomes our own inner voice. And therefore, when you when you get triggered around validation, I'm assuming like that's what comes up. What I'm going for in that last role play, the healthy one, is that the parent confirms the feelings and they acknowledge them up front. And they also confirm as well as explore what it must feel like further with the, the person sort of saying, imagine, I imagine it's not safe yet to talk to anybody like your coworkers to validate all of that pressure and aloneness. So they're really sort of thinking about, I think good validation is like putting ourselves in the person's shoes and, and sort of opening our heart to some empathy there. You know, they, then the parent then shares, shares the upset and develops a connection with them. Um, that's what it means to be seen. So in this role play, this scenario, the job situation is so off that it's clear that the employer is in the wrong and the situation is toxic. It's kind of a no-brainer. But what happens when it's not so clear-cut? And what I mean by that, sometimes a client will come in and they, they will come in very, very triggered and they'll be seeking that kind of, I mean, I'm a, that's my job. <laughs> um, I hope I'm good at it. They'll be seeking connection from me and they'll be seeking validation from me like that's what I'm there for. But I'll hear things that usually it's something about that they're having an over-the-top reaction, a trauma reaction to the situation. And they may, they may say something like, um, I had a bump with my partner and I just couldn't deal with them so I stopped talking to them for two days. Or they may say that a sibling asked something really big of them and it triggered them and they, um, they just can't get back to them. Or they may say that they had a huge bump with their partner or a friend and they lost it on them. And what I will still do is I'll still hold space and make the connection and validate for what it must be. Because I know what it's like to be triggered and that's kind of like, a, that's, it's easy for me to do because I've been there in all these, all these situations. And I do that up front. And then what I will do next is I will sort of ask them about what's the trigger for them in all of those situations. Like how is it true growing up in those situations with the partner or with the sibling or whatever. And try to get them to talk about that past kind of experience. Then I will sort of maybe give them the feedback lastly about how they might have a part in it. Like if they put their partner in the doghouse, that's silent treatment and that's not good for anybody. They may have learned that from their family system. Or it's even makes our depression and anxiety worse if we get into an avoiding thing and we might have needed to do that growing up in childhood because it was too overwhelming. But we'll probably feel more self-esteem building by showing up and getting back to the, to the sibling or whatever. And or if we have lost it on somebody, we may need to make an amends and own our part and all that. So that's what I mean about that. But that's done on the back end. And because I want to make sure that the person feels safe with me and make, you know, make sure that they feel that I get it. So it's often why I often talk about my own family system in these videos for that same reason, because it's sort of, I feel safer when someone has been there, when someone knows that, or when someone had parents like mine and, and that it's like a there's, a, there's an intimacy in that, that, that just feels safe. And I'm sure you guys know this, but validation is not just giving the person what they want, even if they have a big, piece to play in the upset or whatever. The job thing, like I said, was an easy, easy scenario, but if the client had said, <laughs> I fired off an email where I couldn't take and I couldn't take it anymore and I CC'd HR and the vice president and my coworkers that I was getting a lawyer and I demanded back pay for the increase of hours and I probably dropped a bunch of F-bombs in this, in this email and then I trashed the Xerox machine. And I'm being silly, but if a client came in with that, I'm probably going to be like, on the inside, I might be like, oh, you know, good, you know. <laughs> like, um, but I'd validate the feelings of being taken advantage of, but later I would also challenge and advise them that they may need to work on being more diplomatic and not causing more problems in their life from being reactive, like in that sort of scenario. Um, like it's better to be diplomatic about something than to blow something up and that's a skill 
um, that we need to sort of learn. So, so some journaling prompts for you guys about if you resonate with this video and if you do have a hard time seeking validation and then problems come from that, here are three things that you can start to do some writing on. The first is to write down what was validation like growing up in general where you needed help and connection around a problem. Think about three to four examples of what would happen if you seeked out that problem, if you seeked out that level of care. Um, were they anything like in the role plays that I talked about? Like your fourth grade, you're being bullied, having a problem with friends, um, having a problem with one parent. What would go down if you were seeking connection and help, which is what validation is. So that's the first writing prompt. The second one is in the present, think about in the past five to 10 years, how do you usually get triggered around validation? Do you go to shame or do you go to defensiveness um, or do you get freaked out by being seen or helped? And coming back to what I said earlier in the video is, um, shame about sharing after you're seeking validation? Or do you focus on one thing that the person said and become defensive around that, missing the bigger message? That's what I mean about this one. And the third one, which is probably the more involved one, is if you can't figure out if it's you or if it's the person who you know, triggered you around validation or both is, a is think about the response that you were seeking from the person. Was there a fantasy in that? Or how did you want it to go? And when I say fantasy, I'm thinking about an inner child fantasy. Did your inner child want a parental level of care that might have been too big for the person? And I'm not saying you're wrong in any way. Like, you know, it's like in these scenarios, I'm not saying it's all you or it's all them. It's just I, I couldn't possibly know given I because I don't know your specific examples or the person or whatever. But what I am saying is that um, it's, you know, you might have been seek, you might have been projecting something onto the person that was trying to that was, you know, that you were seeking validation from. And that's one way it could have gone wrong to look at. Is it you? Then the second part is the B part is think about if the person might have been triggered about giving the validation. Um, you know, when that parent sort of says, well, what do you want from me? And you didn't ask me about work is they were triggered out of their mind. And it's, you know, and they were they were very unhealthy in that trigger. Or the parent who talked about the movie, they're, 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 so they're in a dissociative state. They're so out of it. They're so kind of wacky and gone that they're not even with you, which is a sign of being triggered. Um, if you typically have a moody partner or a moody friend who becomes oppositional around validating you, you might need to stop going to them. But this one about trying to figure out if it's, if it is it them or is it you, is to think about, you know, I think as trauma survivors, we assume we're the only ones triggered and other people are like making healthier choices when that's really so not true. The person you're seeking validation from might be triggered as well, especially if they're really a dismissive or there's a big energy or there's a big criticism up front. So that's what I mean by that. And a good way to figure that out if it's more them is to ask yourself, what was at stake for the person in simply validating me or just sitting with me with those feelings? Like, why was that so dangerous to them is one way to look at this stuff. So, um, you know, it took my wife and I a long time to show up for each other around validation. And we both had our own parts in it being either overly defensive or overly sensitive. So it does sort of take some time to figure this stuff out. So I hope that that video was helpful to you guys. And as always, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. And may you be joyous. If this was helpful to you guys, and if you would like to see another video on what, it, what the triggers around giving validation is, you know, just leave a comment in, in, the, in the video below and I'll see what I can do. Take care, guys.